Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to be together to worship our God. It's been another difficult week for our country and our world. I battled with changing my sermon for today, but decided that too many of us need to hear that we are the beloved of God. So we will spend other time during worship today lamenting what has happened this past week. During the reading of God's word in the prayers of the people, and then again after fellowship hour, for any of you who would like to stay and spend additional time, we will have a, a brief time of prayer and lament together. As I was talking with Norma this week, we both agreed that we have a deep sense of lament inside of us, and I imagine many of you do as well. So we come to God this morning, as always, in worship, in lament, and in a deep need for a savior. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you join me in our responsive call to worship? Come, come into the presence of the Lord today. We come with all the hopes and sorrows, all our hopes and dreams and cares. You have been fashioned by God's love. You are called across the waters of creation to be a blessing. We have been called to be people of hope and light. You have been offered nourishment and cleansing by creation's waters. Help us to receive again the blessing of adoption by God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you to sing with me today our opening song, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. And this is going to be number 109 on your hymnals. We are going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. We are baptized, called to be a ministering people, 
called to be agents of change, created to give glory to God through our words and actions. The Holy Spirit has claimed us to be praying, caring, giving disciples of Jesus Christ. In this time of confession, we acknowledge how far we are from what we were created to be. In humbleness, let us come before God and one another in confession. Merciful God, Merciful God, in baptism, you grafted us into the body of Christ, promising us forgiveness of sin and newness of life. But we fail to live as forgiven people. We keep destructive habits and hold grudges. We allow our past to hold us hostage and are reluctant to welcome newness. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Remind us of the promises you have made to us in baptism so that we may live as your people claimed in the waters of promise. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. The love of God is offered to us freely, joyfully for all eternity. Rejoice. This is the good news of our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, first, I wanted to say it's always um, a wonderful reminder when God's word um, speaks to us today as if it was just written. As you hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, I hope that you can hear their relevance to today and all that we are experiencing, not unlike the times of the prophets. Let us pray. We know that there is healing in your words, amazing God, if only we could hear them. We pray for ears to hear and understand. We pray for the ability to accept all that you offer us, your love, your grace, and yourself. Amen. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. This is my name, my glory. I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. 
John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Christ. We hear John's confusion. Baptize you, Jesus? No, 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 you're supposed to baptize me. For good reason, John is confused by this turn of events. It's been very clear that he's not the one. He's just the one who points the way to the one. So why does Jesus, the only one without sin, feel the need to be baptized? Karl Barth says, no one who came to the Jordan was as laden and afflicted as he. In other words, when Jesus was baptized, he needed to be washed of sin, not his sin, but our sin. And that is the beauty of this moment. The burden Jesus is carrying as he gently prods John into walking with him into the water, allowing himself to be laid back and hearing the cleansing words, just as you or I would. While at first, this may seem like all of John's previous baptisms, God's words tell a different story. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And for some reason, every time I read this passage, this is the one phrase that always jumps out at me. I wonder if it's the same for you. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Those words seem so incredibly beautiful and personal to me. I wonder if you could be called anything in the world, what would you be called? For me, more than any other word, I would like to be called beloved. And in truth, don't we all crave being the beloved? How many of us crave hearing the words, I love you? We want to belong. We want to be loved. We want to be special. In fact, I think we go to great lengths to experience those feelings. I'm convinced that one of the reasons that platforms like Facebook have grown so much is that it offers us some level of affirmation that people notice us and respond to us and care for us. As shallow as it can be, those likes and those friend requests and those comments, well, they mean something to us. We want to be loved. We want to be affirmed. But the thing is, as good as affirmation is, it doesn't go very deep, at least not the surface type that social media platforms offer. Because while being affirmed feels nice, it doesn't fulfill us. We are a world of people who often feel plenty affirmed, but still incredibly lonely. So what is it that we really need and crave? What would bring us deep joy and peace? I think that it's acceptance that we really crave. Acceptance for who we are and what we look like and what our history says about us and what we think, for who we are at our most basic level. This isn't the acceptance that says we fit in this is the acceptance that says we are valued just as we are. And this is where baptism comes in. Jesus' baptism and ours. This is my son, the beloved, 
with whom I am well pleased. These words are personal and poignant and really powerful. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Wrapped in these words of acceptance are the blessings of identity and worth and unwavering regard. We experience this when we baptize an infant, this sense that God's love is free right from the start with no strings attached and no requirements necessary. The baptism of Jesus is a summation of all that Jesus is, all that his ministry is going to be, and all that Jesus is willing to do for us. When Jesus heals the sick and loves the unlovable and feeds the hungry and cares for those who everyone else has cast aside, acknowledges that there is value in women and in slaves and in children and in tax collectors. When he does those things, he is doing what was done for him that day in the river. He is living out the words that were said to him. This is my beloved son and I love him everything about him. And here's the thing. In that moment when we are baptized, God is telling us that we are his, we are precious, we are beloved. You are my son and you are my daughter and I love everything about you. In the same way that Jesus is assured through his baptism that he is the beloved of God, we too are assured that we are the beloved of God. I love that. Even when things seem ugly or we feel really alone or desperate or unaccepted, even when we don't seem to be close to anyone in the whole world, the baptism of Jesus assures us that we are in fact beloved. That we are in fact never, ever alone. That we are in fact loved from the tops of our heads to the tips of our toes and everything in between the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the baptism of Jesus doesn't end that day in the Jordan River. As we learned in our baptism sermon series this past summer, the baptism of Jesus extends to us, telling us quite clearly who we are and to whom we belong. And because we belong to God, we are also the recipients of his promises, blessings, and love, none of which ever diminish or change or go away. We are chosen. We are marked. We are loved. These are the words of acceptance we crave. Words that say no matter what we do, God never stops calling us his beloved. He never stops forgiving us. He never pushes us away. He always accepts us. God promises through baptism to constantly work on us and make us better, to never say we aren't worth it. This is the difference between affirmation and acceptance. This is not something sort of out there in the cosmos, hard to grab a hold of like a Facebook like. This is God's eternal promise. A promise we can see and feel and touch when God says, you, you are my beloved. This is not a shallow pat on the back, nice job, I think you're pretty good. But rather as you are my beloved and I think you are perfect. I accept and love everything about you. But I wonder, I wonder if you really believe that you are beloved. Our lives are pretty fragile and they're filled with things to pull us away from God, things to make us feel unloved and not good enough and alone and very far from being beloved. These beads I'm holding represent all of the things that we carry. 
I want you to think about the things that you are carrying right now, the things that you have carried and never let go of, the things that weigh you down and make you feel unclean and unaccepted and unloved, the things that keep you from the relationship you crave with God and others. Things like shame and anger and loneliness, and damaged relationships, and broken promises, and fear, and hopelessness, and insecurities, shattered dreams, discouragement, anything that keeps you from inheriting these amazing promises offered to us in the baptism of Christ. There are so many things to keep us from God. I wonder what keeps you from God. and from one another. Sometimes it's hard to remember that we are the beloved of God. Actually, a lot of the time, it's really hard to remember. So I don't think we can hear it enough. Today, I want to remind you that you are a beloved child of God. And I want you to really, really hear that. You are a beloved child of God. You are a beloved child of God. You, you are a beloved child of God. I know that we are all muted right now, except me, but I want you to repeat after me in your living rooms and spaces there. I am a beloved child of God. Say it with me. I am a beloved child of God. I am a beloved child of God. I wonder what keeps you from believing that that you are beloved. As you leave worship this morning, I challenge you to leave that burden behind, to trust in the cleansing waters of baptism through Christ that we hear about this morning, to trust that you in fact are beloved. The waters of baptism remind us that we are different now. That we are made whole. That we are washed clean by Christ. That we are no longer defined by what we have done or what we have not done. Nor are we defined by our inadequacies or our baggage or our history. The waters of baptism of Christ assure us that we are part of that moment in the Jordan as Jesus is baptized by, Jesus, by John. It reminds us that we are grafted to Christ. We are assured that in baptism, God has promised to love us forever. And to never let us go. My friends, believe this good news. In Christ, our sins are forgiven. Our mistakes are erased. Our history is forgotten. We are made new. We belong to God today and tomorrow and always. We are, in fact, always and forever the beloved of God. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and love, you have called us over the waters and through the waters of baptism, you have blessed us. 
You have cleansed us and healed us and adopted us as your beloved children. Help us to live as children of the light, serving you faithfully all of our days. Amen.
Amen. We're going to enter into a little time of prayer. Um, one of the ways that I would like to uh, to jo jointly pray for what is happening, uh, what's what happened this past week, and what's going on, is um, is to say I'll I'll pray for it, but I would love to know some of in one word, tell me something that you wish would be different or you wish that I, that you would like us to pray for. So for me, what I would really like is peace. And that will be part of my prayer. I wondered if when Julian unmutes, if a few of you could just give me one word of what you, what is hurting you this week, what is hurting your hearts by what has happened. And I will add that into my prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, I see now that there's a couple additions. Um, we uh, Also, if you could include Jane Adams in your prayers. Um, she had to leave worship this morning. You may have noticed she was not feeling well at all. So if you could please pray for her that she is feeling better as the day goes on. Thanks. And for our closing hymn today, we are going to be singing, Spirit of God who dwells within my heart. This is number 618 on your hymnal, 618. We are going to be singing verses 1, 4, and 5. If you would and have a moment, if you could stay for uh, some time of fellowship afterwards, grab yourself a cup of coffee and come back and we can catch up. We'll, um, we'll stay together for a little bit and then, um, then we'll, we'll uh, end our fellowship time and spend just a little bit of time in prayer and lament for anybody who'd like to join us um, and uh, I continue our prayer. So um, 
Pray that you go out into the world knowing that you are held by a God who could not love you more if he tried, couldn't believe in you more, couldn't hold you closer to him. You are the beloved of God. With you, God is well pleased. Amen and amen.